Journal. So just a quick video. Uh, International Graphite, a company on the ASX in Western Australia. It's bringing out a study. So they've got a mine where they get the graphite out of the ground, but then the next step to go to the battery is make it into, into balls and then coat it with this coating so it lasts many years to come in the battery. Um, so they bring out a study for that. So normally, if you're looking for a natural graphite company, just to get it out of the ground and sell it, you want to spend $100 million to build the mine and then make that an EBITDA per year. That's a rough rule of thumb. Some companies you can spend like $80 million, make $100 million in EBITDA. Some are worse. You have to spend more in EBITDA, so you have to spend maybe $140 million to build the mine, and then you're making $80 million per year. So you want to aim for someone with a low capex because that means a low dilution on your share price. Always refer to my good friend Core Lithium. Right near a capital city, existing infrastructure, only have to spend $100 million. And lithium prices pull back now, but they could spend $100 million and then make $400 million per year. Um, it's probably decreased a bit since the lithium price come back. That's what you aim for. A low cost to build the mine and they're making millions per year, more than it costs to build the mine for years to come. So also what you look for, the worst thing would be a company who has diesel generators out the middle of nowhere, 500 kilometers from a capital city or a port. That is really not good. Unless they've got freakish grade, but everyone seems to have similar grade with graphite. So you'll want to look for someone close to existing renewable grid power. That's probably the holy grail. The best thing is, like I said, CXO, right near capital city. Everything's existing. Existing workforce, because then you only have to spend... A little bit of money and you can make a lot of and then make a lot of money so spend a little and make a lot is what you want to aim for the best natural graphite one I see also comes down to price you obviously can't buy it for 500 million you want to buy it at a low price to start with before the announcements come out that they've done well you sort of have to predict these things and I predict it will happen for iTech minerals they got a huge they'll have a hundred year mine life once they finish drilling it out they have to confirm metallurgy as well but uh, that's my top pick for graphite. Apart from this other one, WKT is building the mine right now as we speak. So anyway, iTech Minerals. So anyway, we're talking about IG6. So as I said, these companies to get out of the ground and to sell it, you're spending $100 million and then uh, making $100 million per year. But obviously, if everyone can do that, then th this price will go down. Um, but anyway, IG6, a bit different with the, once you get out of the ground and then code in spear, code it, and make it a spear balls and coat it. Um, you're spending, well, they're spending $300 million Australian. And then they're making US $100 million. So we'll just look at the US figures. $222 million US to make $100 million in EBITDA. So not as good as just getting out of the ground and selling it. But also this, if it costs more now, then this might come out because there'll be more of a shortfall in this. Um... That's what I think might happen. And they believe the shortfall is not going to be at graphite coming out of the ground. The shortfall for graphite will be the actual coded people who are coding and spherinizing it, etc. There'll be a shortfall there. And obviously they have to um, qualify it with the battery makers as well. So does IG6, China has been probably doing this for years with um, synthetic graphite or some natural graphite. Um, these ones are probably the first guys in Australia to do it. They've got a pilot plant. No real advantage over any competition, just that probably they're in Australia, they got their own mine, probably will have renewable power, probably will have government help. So the government probably wants um, to have this set up in Western Australia. West Australian government's probably got a lot of money. They'll say, yep, we want workers, we want work for, um, we want jobs, etc. So maybe they'll send them some money, who knows. So that's for coating it, spherinizing and coating it. And if they want to spherinize it, they can spend less. They can spend $87 million US and then make uh, $43 million EBITDA per year. So not not like when you get out of the ground and spend $100 million and you can get $100 million per year. Um, yeah, so that study. But take in mind, CXO had a study like this when they didn't make that much money at all. Fast forward, the lithium price went crazy, and you redid the numbers, they're making five times as much, so that's what could happen to spherical graphite. Not saying it will, saying it might. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it at that. So just once again, if you're investing in a 
Natural Graphite Company, first one understand batteries. Understand that sodium ion batteries are coming, but the batteries of choice for the next five years to decade will probably be LFP batteries, which contain natural graphite. Um, so basically you want to look for a company, you can look at this study, you basically want to aim for $100 million to build, to make EBIT of $100 million. And obviously if that number's less and that's more, that's even better. But that's a that's a green rule of thumb that I've seen with the natural graphite stocks. And then obviously, yeah, close to existing renewable grid power would be the best thing. And the worst thing would be diesel generators 500 kilometers from existing capital city because you're going to have a massive capex, massive OPEX, sorry, massive OPEX costs. And your, your product, you'll never even get built because no one's going to spend the $500 million to make $100 million where they could pick the one where they can spend $100 million and make $100 million per year. Um, RNU, so we'll just look at their study just to show you. ITM is right next to RNU. RNU's got a free government loan, um, have done more drilling, etc. So that's why they're further ahead of ITM. But their study might have concentrated $80 million. Startup capital total, $142 million. And doesn't give you annual EBITDA. But that's EBITDA over that. Where's the mine life? If you found the mine life divided by this, 40 years. Yeah, which is, if you divide that by 40, it's roughly 43. Sorry, I'm struggling here to find the uh, annual. Dun, 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 dun. Graphite concentrate. So you've timed this number, time this number by 1,000. That could mean $100 million per year off the startup cost of this, but then they're in the anode downstream thing where they're just spherinizing it. They're not coding, just spherinizing. Um, yeah, sorry, a bit tired, but you get the point. They can spend 142 million and then they make, divide that by 40, will give you 100. Yeah, so spend about less than 100 million or just over to make $100 million per year. And they've got massive mine life, and they're in a good country, and they're close to renewable power, etc., etc. And yeah, the sales price could change, which changes all these numbers, making them a lot more better. If you buy before the numbers change, that's probably where you make the money. Um, yeah, sorry, I've probably said a lot of stupid things in this video that not even I will agree with watching it back. But you just got to do the rough numbers with the graphites. Um, and yeah, the share price goes down, but if you know what you're holding, if you know that LFP will be the battery of the future or the next decade at least, until maybe sodium iron improves with energy density, um, then yes. But you don't have to buy any shares at all. You can just wait until they are really cheap and then you've increased your risk to reward. This is not financial advice. Do your research and I'll leave it at that. Thank you.